Thank you very much, Commissioner, for the second and third round. And now we have the last round on questions of the colleagues. First answer is by Pavel Bock, then Creton Arsenis. Now, Creton Arsenis, please. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Commissioner, for being with us. Uh, I asked citizens in Greece what we should be talking about today, and they raised a series of issues. First of all, the mobile phones. We have the early warnings. We know that uh, there are uh, groups of people, like uh, pregnant, pregnant women, uh, young people in their early 20s and before that, uh, that uh, have greater risks. We know that if we have, for example, hand-free uh, or uh, Bluetooth, uh, we know that it reduces this risk. We know that when we have good signal, when we avoid to use the phone, uh, within moving metallic vehicles, trains and so on, cars, it reduces the risk. How, when are we going to inform our citizens for these risk mitigation uh, methods? We need to do that. We are exposing them to great risks, as the, the, science, the scientist tells us. Also on, on GMO, the citizens are asking for compulsory uh, labeling of products coming from animals that uh, received an, uh, GMO feed. Uh, when is the Commission going to come with such a proposal? And uh, finally, a question that has been uh, important in my country, the generic medicine. Uh, there were a lot of doctors coming publicly in Greece saying that generic medicine is dangerous, it's less effective than patented medicine. I would like a, I agree with you, but I would like a comment from you. Thank you. Thank you, Creton. Commissioner. For your response and to answer the question. I, uh, I gladly come here to uh, explain what you're doing and to um, uh, answer any questions. Mr. Arsenis has asked uh, questions on, uh, on, uh, the, uh, on the electromagnetic fields, for example. Um, uh, we must say, first of all, that again here, this is a member state uh, um, uh, competence um, of, of, uh, of the management and, uh, and uh, the information on this risk mitigation. But I take your point. Let, 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 us, uh, let, me, let me make. We are at the moment asking our scientific committee to review the whole science of electromagnetic fields, and I'm sure that uh, depending on what we get as feedback from them, we will then act in the best interest of our citizens, okay? And if it's a question of uh, informing them of, uh, of, uh, of uh, how they can mitigate as much as possible any type of risk from, uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, mobile phones, then uh, we will do it. Because mobile phones today are pervasive. Um, it's something that's being used everywhere. You also see uh, six-year-olds and seven-year-olds now with, you know, with, uh, with mobile phones hanging also. But anyhow, that's a choice of parents, but anyhow. Um, but the reality is that it is important that we will educate people on how to use, as we educate people also how to use other, other tools that we have uh, to live with. On GMO labeling, we must also say here that uh, uh, compulsory labeling of GMO le uh, um, livestock products like meat and milk um, fed with GM um, has no scientific base. Um, uh, the science uh, on this is that feed uh, is degraded and the animal is indistingu feed is degraded and is indistinguishable from uh, the nature from the uh, from um, the makeup of 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 the animal's uh, amino acid um, complex uh, um, makeup and uh, an animal fed with uh, gmos and an animal fed not on gmos are not distinguishable when it comes to analyzing the product itself and therefore um, uh, action on this at the moment is, uh, is not being, being foreseen. An external evaluator will study existing GMO-free labeling initiatives to assess the need for harmonization during the course of this year. We are also try, try, trying to see 
to see what we can do on that.